Each of these panelists, it's come, these, this is a very diverse group. They've done a lot of interesting things with the APIs. Um, we have you know, mobile company, websites, virtual world, kind of a, a large array of um, companies. But um, the great thing is it just shows how versatile our APIs are. And you guys will see what they've done with the APIs. They're all very slick and very cool. So each of them are going to come up and talk about what they've done and kind of like in their own style sort of a lightning tech talk type of fashion. And then we'll definitely have time at the end for you guys to grill them with as many questions as you want. So <laughs> I'll let each of them introduce themselves. The first one up we have is our guy from Slide. So here we go. Hey, everybody. I'm Bobby from Slide. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Slide builds social applications on social, social networks. Like um, we build. Top Friends, uh, Super Pets, Super Poke, and Funwall. So the product that I work on is Funwall. Um, if you don't know what Funwall is, it's it's like Facebook's wall, but uh, more fun. And it allows you allows users to actually send media content to many users um, and their friends, and allows their friends to send the content to their their other friends. Um, the most popular content on Funwall is actually videos. And here we have a video create page. So um, what's important to us is that since the most important content is videos, we want to make the experience very user friendly, uh, easy to use. Um, so for the create portion, we actually use YouTube's uh, feed data APIs. Um, for the actual view portion of videos on Funwall, we use their Chromeless Player APIs. So here's the video page. Um, when a user comes to uh, this create page, they are given the option to create a video based on a search term or cutting and pasting a URL. Um, when a user inputs uh, a keyword search um, into this form, it submits an AJAX request to our servers. The servers talk to YouTube servers, uh, proxied through our YouTube data client. So, uh, the most important parts of the data feed that we need from YouTube are uh, videos by keyword query. And this gives us back a list of videos, uh, followed by uh, video data by video ID. Um, Sometimes we're interested in related videos, so we use the video ID for that. Uh, or if we're interested in the producers of videos, we look up the uploads by username or the favorites by username. Um, so what is what, what do we use for talking to YouTube servers? Basically, uh, we're a Python shop. We love Python. Uh, we have this YouTube object, YouTube feed object, that's uh, written in Python. Um, it's a collection of methods that take parameters to generate these URLs and makes a request out to YouTube servers. Uh, YouTube servers responds. We handle that response and return the results. Um, in this example, there's a, there's a little cold code snippet for uh, videos where um, we take the params and generate a URL and make the request out. Uh, down below, there's an example of how we use this, uh, this uh, Python object by instantiating a YouTube feed object and then calling a method videos and passing it a parameter so you think you can dance, um, which does a keyword search. So um, the meat of this uh, request out, the HTTP request out and response is handled by a built-in Python library called urllib2. Um, we don't use any client authentication or client IDs or developer IDs. Most of these are just publicly available uh, data off of YouTube's data feeds. If we get a bad response, um, we handle it because our request block is wrapped in a try accept block. Um, so we return an empty XML so that our parsers don't puke. Um, the parser that we use is, uh, is also another built-in module of Python called uh, XPAT. It's pretty standardized. It's fast. 
it does what we need to do. Um, the parser parses the RSS feeds, uh, returns back data, everything we need to create a video and store in our database. Uh, the data that's parsed is a video source URL, title, description, preview image, and uploader name. And this is just a, everything we need to save in our database and create a video post. So what happens when a user creates a video post? He sends it to their friends. They send it to their friends. It becomes virally popular on Funwell. Um, it might end up on our videos page, uh, where we have a listing of recommended videos, uh, the most popular at any given time on Funwell. Uh, in this example, we have uh, our Chrome List player. Uh, it, I'm sorry, it uses the YouTube's Chrome List player. Um, as well as showing a list of videos here. So what, is, what do we do with this? How do we use this Chromos player? Um, we have this flash wrapper called a Chromos Harmless, har, uh, Chrome, Chromeless Harness uh, that has event listers for the YouTube player. Uh, it listens to events that the Chromos player might uh, broadcast, like state change or error events, and it can relay these up to uh, the client JS or to the Flash UI controls of our harness. Um, we use uh, YouTube. We have this built-in class called YouTube JS, uh, which relays these events to the client side JS. Or uh, the other thing that it does that's important to us is that it registers JS callbacks. Um, using external interface add callback. Um, what this allows us to do is, like, uh, if we can access through the DOM a reference to the embed object, we can use the interfaces that are registered and directly interact using client side JS with the uh, Flash player. Um, most of this interaction is described in our uh, JS library called yt.js. Um, the most important part of the yt.js is this function called on player state change. So whenever a YouTube Chromeless player has an event that's of interest to us and we call on yt player state change and handle that state change. So the Chromeless player, Chromeless harness calls us on yt player state change, um, telling us the event, for example, that the YouTube player has loaded. Um, we know that it's loaded. We call this function JavaScript function called video init, um, and this because it's a, it's in a yt.js file that is included in many different pages. It can be overridden uh, at the JS level there. Um, in some pages we do some logging. Other pages we might set up like the UI. Um, other pages we might not do anything with it at all. Uh, Another important method that we have is video play. It's also described in JS. Uh, at the very basic level, it, it gets a player ID uh, and finds the DOM reference to the Flash player object and calls one of those JS callbacks. An example of one which we, which we use is player.videoplay, uh, and that's registered with, with the Flash object. So taking a look at uh, the information flow um, from the client side JS to the Chromeless player, um, client side JS calls a video play. The YouTube JS class calls a function in the harness. The harness checks to see if the player is loaded. Loads if needed. P pulls is player loaded and calls load video by ID. Uh, passing in a video ID describing like what video it wants to play. Um, the Chromeless player loads and plays a video from YouTube, broadcasts an on state change event with a value of equal equals of one, uh, playing, and then the player, the harness updates the controls. So, so why do we break it apart? Why do we have uh, the client side JS mechanism? Uh, external, you, why do we use like external interface? Um, 
the most main reason why we use that is that it allows us flexibility of control of the UI. Uh, on our videos tab on Funwall, we can play video after video just by knowing like when a video is finished. Um, we also can do things like once we know that the video player has loaded, uh, we can play an animation beforehand. Uh, after a video is finished, we can, we can throw up a special screen that uh, has UI controls in it in the Flash movie. Um, this probably could have been done uh, without all using external interface or callbacks, but it would have been not as clean or as easy. And that's basically how Slide uses the APIs in a nutshell. Um, we're actually using a built-in. Well, we have a we we have our own Python client library, but we uh, for talking to the feed APIs, we use the built-in module URL lib too. Um, that seems to work well enough for us. All right. So getting started about, about Quick. Quick is live mobile video. It's uh, straight from your phone to the web. We're supporting about 30 phones: uh, Nokia, Microsoft. And some others coming very soon, and it's it's basically a two-way communication and video engine. So you're streaming; it's going live to the web, and the people who are watching it can also chat with you. So you can come through, come down here, and actually chat with myself. <laughs> so that's actually on the screen right here on the phone. I show it to you, but it's kind of important to hold the camera up for this. So that's what we do, but uh, like any video site, uh, if you're producing videos, your users are going to demand that you put it on YouTube. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about, why we did it, how we did it, and what we learned doing it. So uh, that's Quick, the product. So who's using Quick? A few people. Some of them you might know. Michael Arrington, uh, Dwee Paul Desai, am I saying that correctly? who is a stealth user, I think. We haven't seen him on the site, uh, but he's hiding there, I'm told. He works here. Uh, Robert Scoble, uh, Kevin Rose, Congressman John Culberson, and yes, even the Pope is using Quick. <laughs> news, from the, uh, news from the Vatican, it's a new thing. So. Uh, that's, we haven't, we're, we're, we're anxiously awaiting, so we'll see. So the YouTube API and Rails, uh, the things I'm going to talk about are the, our authorization phase, our upload phase, and sort of what we do to integrate and where that's going. And uh, authorize, I'll talk, I'll talk the least about. It's pretty simple. I'm going to put this code snippet where you guys can get to it as well. Um, actually, I'll put all of this code where you guys can get to it. So if you want to do uploads to YouTube on Rails, uh, feel free. The important thing here is the upload controller. And this is where things get a little tricky, because Rails is not thread aware. So typically, everything between the time you get a response, uh, the time you get a request and the time you provide the response, you're not doing anything else. And if you're doing a big upload in between those, you're really not doing anything else. If you start thinking about scalability and how many of these processes you want to run, it becomes an issue pretty quickly. It gets pretty bottlenecked. Now, this is just uh, the controller version. You can see right underneath the bold where it says uploading video, that's making a call to a model method which looks like this. Um, not as interesting. Again, the code will be on the site. But this is what it does to our methods. Let's say we're taking a call. For example, we automate this so that whenever you stream, it automatically goes to YouTube. That means our server is listening for you to do something. And then before we answer the phone back, we're actually uploading something to YouTube. Um, and if you look at the little bar, that's the way the method was before we started doing this. And the big bar is the way the method looked afterwards, time-wise. So, Pretty scary, and if you were doing hardware or rollout planning, it's really scary. So what can we do about this? Well, we ran into this thing. We looked around for ways of offloading Rails calls, and uh, there are a bunch of different asynchronous methods. Twitter uses one that they made. And we ended up going with one called Skynet, which is basically an open source version of the MapReduce-style framework um, that Google pioneered. It's adaptive, it's self-upgrading, it's fault-tolerant, and distributed, fully distributed. And we have modified this to allow a single word to be added to a method call from a model and have it offloaded automatically. So we didn't have to change the source code. Just very, very minor changes. Go in and write, add something. 
And the code for this is also available on GitHub. The URL is there. It'll be in the PDF that you can download. And there are other options for doing this that we'll be exploring later on, including App Engine, which is pretty intriguing. You know, getting something completely off your, off your network is appealing. So this is that same, I'm going to go back a bit for a second. This method here, I'm going to show it to you again now with the one difference highlighted. And that is the green word right there. That's the difference. And that gave us instantaneous response. Our response time is back to normal. And it automatically offloads this process back to the background. And everything just happens automatically. So very, very cool software. We like it a lot. My, my presentation is pretty short, sorry. Uh, so lessons learned. It is a connection, not a wall. Now, we treated it like a wall to start with. It's one of those things, hey, it's a checkbox, YouTube integration. There's actually a story about this. So. YouTube integration was something we wanted to do before there was an API to do it. Now, how many people have heard of PHPTube? PHPTube. No hackers here? Before there was an API, if you wanted to get videos into YouTube, you could do it using PHPTube. And we set a goal, videos to YouTube from Quick. And the guys did it. A lot of effort, ported it to Rails, got it working. Just as we're celebrating, the very next day, Google I mean, YouTube announces the API, literally the next day. <laughs> we didn't get, even get to announce it. We still have the code, actually. So if anybody's interested in that, in that let me know. Um, so it's a connection not a wall. Don't throw things over it. Um, when you're uploading, you're given a URL for the new video. Use that so people can see what's going on with the video after they upload it to YouTube. They do something automatically. We've got a site with videos, right? So they know things are going to YouTube. If they go to YouTube, they can find it. But there really should be a link. You should be able to go and see what's going on, how many users you have watching your, your videos on YouTube. So if you have a sort of a video destination site, sending something over there, making that connection more than just a one-way thing is really important. Track views, link to the user, uh, link to the users watching the videos, and try to add value more than just treating it as a one-way conduit, either in or out, really. That's where the real value is. And that's it. Thank you, everybody. So. so the question is, which mobile platforms do we support? Today, we support most of the Nokia N-Series, uh, a couple of Microsoft Windows mobile devices, which we're just getting started with. It's the Motorola Q and the uh, Samsung Blackjack 2. And, and I think there's a Sprint equivalent to that as well. And uh, if you have a jailbroken iPhone, we support that today. <laughs> and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Any other questions? Great. All set? We'll get All started. Right. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Brad Jefferson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Animoto Productions. Uh, Animoto is the end of slideshows. We're really driving to be the global standard for turning pictures and music into professional-looking video content. So we'll turn your pictures and music into something like this. First off, um, let's look at what kind of videos. So this is humorous. I was just looking at this last night. So the first one is, um, there was a theme of ukuleles earlier today. So this first one is actually Britney Spears' video by a ukulele parody singer. And we'll click on that in a moment just to, I, I won't bore you with the whole thing. But um, let's see some other ones. Oh, you probably, you may have noticed uh, Big Booty Judy. I'll let you check that one out in your free time. Uh, some of the other fun ones in the top 20, like uh, Chris Cooley is actually, he's the tight end of the Washington Redskins, so he and his wife got married, he grabbed a bunch of wedding photos, created an animal to video, and then posted it to YouTube, and it's one of the most popular ones. Uh, one that actually just escaped the top 20 that I'll point out is uh, someone, uh, one of the TechCrunch writers created a Michael Arrington birthday video, so they actually posted this video on TechCrunch at, on, Mike's, on Mike's birthday this year. So I'm going to go back. By clicking one of these, and as promised, I'll only play the first five seconds because this song will get stuck in your head and it's horrible. Oops, I did it again. Checked into rehab and checked out again. Whoopsies. And oops. Okay, so anyway, the, uh, <laughs> the, so on the right side here, you don't, you'll notice the metadata. So it comes across as animoto.com with, with a simple link. So, Obviously, that helps with some distribution. The other interesting thing is, you know, amongst these 20 videos, if you count the views, uh, it's over a million views on these 20 videos. So there's no way we're going to get that kind of distribution on Animoto.com. So it's a great way from just a marketing perspective to get out there. Um, the other interesting thing is, I mean, you can kind of do the math of this one. 
is, um, you know, if we were to actually pay for these million views, on average, these things are about four megabytes each. That'd be four million uh, megabytes or 4,000 gigabytes. Uh, we use Amazon Web Services, the S3 for streaming, so that's 15 cents per uh, gigabyte. So it'd be about 600 bucks um, to stream that. So thanks, YouTube, for paying that bill. Um, it's kind of a nice thing. Of course, they can advertise again, so they probably make six billion dollars off of it. But again, that's not our focus right now. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back to Enomoto. I'm going to refresh this page. The other thing that we do is um, once it's been exported, and hopefully this, um, you know, now if I go through and I click on this tab, it's it's changed. So now it says play video or edit, edit info. So if I were to click on edit info. You know, it takes me right into my account, so I can edit the info of that video. So just trying to make it really easy for the user. Um, I can also play the video if I wanted to do that. Uh, let's see. In terms of um, uh, lessons learned, overall, I'd say it's, it's been a good working experience. It was fun to be part of the, um, the launch on this one. And um, the, YouTube the YouTube team has been great, the tech team. Um, also, just the different community around the forums and, and participation there. Um, but the biggest thing was, you know, our users really like this, and it was something that we really wanted to offer them. And especially for the users that want to get distribution of their videos, there's no better stage than YouTube. So we were pleased by that. Um, the biggest complaint, which actually was addressed earlier, was um, the resolution. They're like, well, how come the resolution is a lot worse? Why is it grainy on YouTube and clear on Animoto? Um, so it's good to hear that there's work being done on that. In terms of our future plans, um, kind of like that Spore channel, I mean, I think it'll be really cool to have an Animoto channel within YouTube. And so you should be able to, instead of having to search for Animoto.com, you just go to the Animoto channel and you can see all the videos there. Um, we also like the idea of just any additional branding around the video within Animoto, within YouTube. So instead of the, the link, the blue link, we'd prefer to have like a, an Animoto logo that someone could click on. So when someone watches this, they also see the Animoto brand there. Um, we're experimenting with some community features within Animoto.com, like commenting and rating. And so if we were to do that, we'd obviously want to integrate with the YouTube commenting and rating. And more than anything, we're just excited that uh, now in terms of participation in the YouTube community, you don't need video, you don't need video editing equipment or experience. All you need is access to photos or images, and you can create a video with Animoto and upload it to YouTube and participate in that community. So I thought I'd, I'd add, end on one last video. When we launched this thing in Animoto style, we just created an Animoto video. And that's how we kind of announced this. So here is the Animoto meets YouTube video. And I'll, this, is my, this is the end. Egos are the Beastie Boys, so you might see us running around in red tracksuits. Thank you. Um, so then, then we can define what metadata is actually passed to YouTube with the Animoto video. So the title um, carries over from what they, what they named it in Animoto. I can change that if I want. Uh, the description, same kind of thing. You'll notice that we've, um, we've put in some metadata there. So created at Animoto.com. That was something that we really wanted is each of these videos, we want to be tagged with metadata that says Animoto.com. Video category, you, know, you can pick that. Tags, do you want it private, public? Um, so then you say export now. So it says, export to YouTube. Your video is being exported to YouTube. This may take several minutes. You'll be emailed as soon as it's complete. Or for the less patient, you can refresh this page to check on its status. All right, so let's go over to YouTube and see what this all looks like. Um, all right, so I did a search on just animoto.com, and I did my um, sort by view count. And so just since the API was launched, which was in March, we've got uh, almost 20,000 videos 
um, uh, animated videos that have been uploaded to YouTube. And so a couple things about this, is, which is kind of fun. And first off, um, let's look at what kind of videos. So this is humorous. I was just looking at this last night. So the first one is, um, there was a theme of ukuleles earlier today. So this first one is actually Britney Spears' video by a ukulele parody singer. And we'll click on that in a moment just to, I, w I won't bore you with the whole thing, but um, let's see some other ones. Oh, you probably, you may have noticed uh, Big Booty Judy. I'll let you check that one out in your free time. Uh, some of the other fun ones in the top 20, like uh, Chris Cooley is actually, he's the tight end of the Washington Redskins. So he and his wife got married. He grabbed a bunch of wedding photos, created an animal to video, and then posted it to YouTube. And it's one of the most popular ones. Uh, one that actually just escaped the top 20 that I'll point out is uh, someone, uh, one of the TechCrunch writers created a Michael Arrington birthday video. So they actually posted this video on TechCrunch at, on, Mike's, on Mike's birthday this year. So I'm going to go back. By clicking one of these, and as promised, I'll only play the first five seconds because this song will get stuck in your head and it's horrible. Oops, I did it again. Checked into rehab and checked out again. Whoopsies. And oops. Okay, so anyway, the, uh, <laughs> the, so on the right side here, you know, you'll notice the metadata. So it comes across as animoto.com with, with a simple link. So obviously that helps with some distribution. The other interesting thing is, you know, amongst these 20 videos, if you count the views, uh, it's over a million views on these 20 videos. So there's no way we're going to get that kind of distribution on animoto.com. So it's a great way from just a marketing perspective to get out there. Um, the other interesting thing is, I mean, you can kind of do the math of this one, is, um, you know, if we were to actually pay for these million views, on average these things are about four megabytes each. That'd be 4 million uh, megabytes or 4,000 gigabytes. Uh, we use Amazon Web Services, the S3, for streaming. So that's 15 cents per uh, gigabyte. So it'd be about 600 bucks um, to stream that. So thanks, YouTube, for paying that bill. <laughs> um, it's kind of a nice thing. Of course, they can advertise again. So they probably make $6 billion off of it. But <laughs> again, that's not our focus right now. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back to Animoto. I'm going to refresh this page. The other thing that we do is um, once it's been exported, and hopefully this, um, you know, now if I go through and I click on this tab, it's, it's changed. So now it says play video or edit, edit info. So if I were to click on edit info, you know, it takes me right into my account so I can edit the info of that video. So just trying to make it really easy for the user. Um, I can also play the video if I wanted to do that. Uh, Let's see, in terms of um, uh, lessons learned, overall, I'd say it's, a, it's been a good working experience. It was fun to be part of the, um, the launch on this one. And um, the, YouTube the YouTube team has been great, the tech team. Um, also, just the different community around the forums and, and participation there. Um, but the biggest thing was, you know, our users really like this. And it was something that we really wanted to offer them. And especially for the users that want to get distribution of their videos, there's no better stage than YouTube. So we were pleased by that. Um, the biggest complaint, which actually was addressed earlier, was um, the resolution. They're like, well, how come the resolution is a lot worse? Why is it grainy on YouTube and clear on Animoto? Um, so it's good to hear that there's work being done on that. In terms of our future plans, um, kind of like that Spore channel, I mean, I think it'll be really cool to have an Animoto channel within YouTube. And so you should be able to, instead of having to search for Animoto.com, you just go to the Animoto channel and you can see all the videos there. Um, we also like the idea of just any additional branding around the video within Animo within YouTube. So instead of the, the link, the blue link, we'd prefer to have like a, an Animoto logo that someone could click on. So when someone watches this, they also see the Animoto brand there. Um, we're experimenting with some community features within Animoto.com, like commenting and rating. And so if we were to do that, we'd obviously want to integrate with the YouTube commenting and rating. And more than anything, we're just excited that uh, now, in terms of participation in the YouTube community, you don't need video. You don't need video editing equipment or experience. All you need is access to photos or images. And you can create a video with Animoto and upload it to YouTube and participate in that community. So I thought I'd, I'd add, end on one last video. When we launched this thing in Animoto style, we just created an Animoto video. And that's how we kind of announced this. So here is the Animoto Meets YouTube video, and I'll, this is my, this is the end.
alter egos are the Beastie Boys, so you might see us running around in red tracksuits. Thank you. Yeah, so on our site, um, so we've licensed a bunch of music, and so when you create a video, you can uh, retrieve music from our site, which is all licensed, or you can upload your own. And so we're pretty clear about what, what you need, you know, that you have to be the creator of that music. Um, and that was the original intent of the Animoto site was for MySpace bands and artists, and for them to create music videos to post. Um, but it's also, I mean, it's an interesting question, right, that even YouTube and Vi with the Viacom thing is going through. And it is one of the reasons why we, you know, keep the Animoto community private is because we don't want people to be uh, impacted by that. So, um, yeah, so, but, you know, like everyone, we're working with Audible Magic and, and trying to figure out the right thing to do. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that particular song, though, that's, that was licensed by us. That's not a Beastie Boys song. It was just the outfits. That was the comment. But um, yeah, so the interesting thing is, I mean, YouTube has the majority of those relationships already intact. And so they've got a lot of that fingerprinting done. And so if someone was to use music that they shouldn't be using and put it onto YouTube, YouTube does have a lot of those relationships with the record label. So in the rev share deals already in place. But that's why we're different than like a spore Spore owns all the creative content, the music and the imagery, all the imagery that goes around it. So they get the, um, th they get the rev share out of that. Um, whereas we, you know, it's our users that own their music. It's our users that own their photos. So we aren't entitled to any of that rev share with YouTube. Anything else? Yeah. So, so yeah, so right now it's just images like JPEGs and, and MP3s or from our music selection, um, but it's on the product roadmap. Yeah, we're, we're excited about video and text and voice and all that stuff. Uh -huh. How long will it take? Five minutes? You know, take some music that's on your site and put it on your website. How long will it take for you to get it? Yeah, so it's um, right now for a 30 second video, which is the free video, it takes about three to four minutes. And during that process, you know, we're figuring out how it all goes together, and we're actually rendering it frame by frame. So it's very, very processor intensive. <coughs> we've uh, we've been in the news a bit about cloud computing, just because without cloud computing, we, we had a, a Facebook spike that went from this is this is kind of a whole other story. But um, we had uh, 50 servers, and by the end of the week, we had 5,000 servers, processors cranking on these renderings. And you know, if we had 5,000 servers times you know this, the lowest cost. I mean, that's multi-million dollars, and so you would have had to gone a VC round to, to do that. But with AWS, we, you know, we were able to flow. Yeah, I did mine. It took like two minutes. Like two, two and a half minutes. Stops. Like yeah. Minutes. Yeah, we, we uh, just like four weeks ago, we just reduced the time because we used to do it on single processors, and now we distribute it amongst uh, multiple processors. And then... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, so there's, there's things that we're working on with that, but yeah, we're trying to get it down as little as possible. Hi there, thanks. Hi, I'm Vincent Rubino, I'm with Gaia Online. I'm actually the director of engineering there, so I don't actually write code, uh, but the person who wrote all this code is in the audience. So if we do have any technical questions, I can call them up, and then we're gonna be all set. So <laughs> bear with me, I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> So, I don't know if any of you have seen Gaia online before, but to give you a rough overview, it was originally founded in 2003, and it's one of the leading online teen and young adult hangouts. Basically, they come to Gaia to hang out and do whatever teens do. We have more than 5 million unique users a month and more than 350,000 daily users logging in. At any given point of the day, you can find about 100,000 people, or any point in the afternoon, you can find about 100,000 people. We have more than a billion forum posts daily, which makes us the number two forum and bulletin board site we passed to AOL somewhat recently. And we're also the number one time spent in the area of social media, according to Hitwise. And we have done more than 100,000 auctions every day. 
So to give you an idea of some of the things that are going on on the site, we have these avatars. And you put on clothes on your avatars and you do some kind of wacky stuff. People fire up all the different avatar experience. You have all your friends so you can keep track of your friends, talk with them. Pretty soon you'll be able to teleport to exactly where they are. Then you can develop houses, people visit you in, the, in your house. We also have things where you go in and people have created clubs to communicate areas of interest. And we have areas where people have developed their own writing and style, and finally, artwork. And they rate their artwork. Oddly enough, a few months ago, we had people create one of their houses into our virtual environment, and they treated it as a theater. So they were inviting all these people to a dress rehearsal. So what you see is the dress rehearsal of some Gaia people. So, but the reason that we're here is because of YouTube. So we have a product called VJ. It's the Video Junkie product. And somewhere here I should have that. So on Video Junkie, what we do is we have YouTube videos, but also the ability to tie together several videos. So you can jump around and pick another person's video, or if none of them are free, you can see absolutely nothing uh, as it zips by. And the users come in and browse through many different playlists, but the more interesting thing that thing that they can do is create their own playlists. So we have that capability, which should come up. And let's say we want to do a playlist on, I don't know, golf. So we do a search on golf, and we get a bunch of different topics on the golf subject. We say, hey, let's add it to our playlist. And let's see if there's anything more about golf we want to add. Oh, that's the same one. OK. The mouse is acting strangely. So let's save our playlist, and we will dismiss the error. <laughs> this is why the engineer is called for. Um, oh, actually, I need to log in. So nobody look at my password as I type it in. <laughs> OK. Good, it has the stars. I, I'm never sure when these things are developed in ActionScript whether or not we're going to get it all correct. Um, and let's see, are we good to go on this? Maybe not. Maybe not. OK. Um, so anyway, you build your playlist, and it allows you to add a number of videos, and then you can watch it. So what is the code behind all of this? Unfortunately, our window that we have here is our old friend, the Chromeless Player. The disadvantage with the Chromeless Player is it's only available in ActionScript 2 rather than ActionScript 3. So what we had to do in order to do that is develop an extra layer using local connection. I don't know. Are there any Flash developers out there in the audience? Yay, there's a few. OK. Um, if you've used local connection before, you know it's kind of a beast to work with. What we did, though, is we wrapped all the action script, talked via the local connection, and then are writing all of our code in action script three. So to give you an idea with some real code, here, here's our code. And as you can see, it's just about two pages of code to actually do the following demo. So we can do our same thing. We can do our golf search. It can show us a number of movies. We can pick the hot golf lesson. And the hot golf lesson should appear if I'm logged in or even if I'm not logged in. And we'll see if it's downloading. It would play, but for whatever reason, it's not. Let's kill it out. Actually, I probably don't want to play that one anyway because it's a little bit too racy for this audience. So if you want to look at the code that's involved, we have four different, classes, four different classes that you have to import in. There's YouTube data, YouTube data, event and query parameters, and data parser. Those are all the pieces that have to do with the data handling. We also have a YouTube, uh, a YouTube data object, which allows us to actually deal with the Chromeless player. So your create children goes and uh, I'm going to skip that part. So at the bottom, you have the Flex Framework portion, the MXLM, XMLSM, I don't know. It was something like that. And here, we simply have a little box for the query. And when you hit Enter, it'll execute a search. When you go, and then it will populate the data in the data grid, as, as explained by this underscore videos and the curly braces. And basically, that gives us our entire interaction of doing a search, picking the items, and then on click, on click item event, playing the video. And then the YouTube player itself will execute the code. I don't think I need to go any deeper in this. But the key thing to look at is it's just two pages of code to basically give you the ability to search and play videos in ActionScript 3. 
And what we would really dearly love to see from YouTube is an AS3 Chromeless player. <laughs> so then we don't have to open source this and bring with it all the issues that it brings with it. So if you have any questions, I guess it's at the end or whenever the next person is setting up. Thank you very much. The question was, what kind of videos do you most often see people sharing on Gaia? Well, the usual suspects, uh, ones that are, shall we say, pixelated. You get a fair bit of that, and we have to clear them out because they're then messing with our terms of service. Um, and then there's people streaming together other shortened forms of movie clips. Uh, yeah. Yes? Anime is one of the common themes that tie people together, and I would definitely say the most viewed content tends to be of the anime variety, um, but people post all sorts of things. The virtual goods, the trade in the marketplace there. What about it? Yes, they trade virtual goods online. People trade gold and tr they can either trade items directly or they trade for gold and then use the gold to buy other things in the market. That is a big part of our revenue. Yes, the majority of our revenue is people buying virtual items. Okay, there's a question. We do have one other provider, but YouTube is definitely the most popular one of the bunch. No, that's right. I'll just, I'll just talk the about playlist the more or less merges between them. Um, when you're working with the other sources, then we do what I think of as a web 1.5 technology. We go scrape their page and pull out the video and, you know, render it in there. Um, so it's a little touch and go. It's not as clean as the Chromeless player. That's not good. No problem. Okay, the question was whether or not most of our users use YouTube as a method of marketing their items. I don't believe they actually are quite there for that. Um, most of our items seem to be marketed directly in, in our marketplace. Uh, we, we don't actually have a capability yet for uploading movies to YouTube. Yes, sir. More or less, yes. Is that at like 90% of where your revenue is No, it's, I wouldn't say it's a 90% balance. We, uh, it is a significant portion and it's more majority, but it is less than 90%. We also have various sponsorships that we run on the site. And of course, you know, we sell shirts and all that. <laughs> exactly, toys, plushies, all the goodies. Haven't decided on a timing yet. There hasn't really been a demand, a specific name demand until your question now. Um, <laughs> but it is, it is something we don't really recommend. The local connection piece is pretty clunky. I didn't show it as part of the demo, but if you go and do a second play and you have a different tab that's playing one, suddenly you pick a movie and it starts playing in the other tab. You know, it's just a real nightmare to work with. Not that I know of, uh, and certainly not a legal way to do it, <laughs> and not a way that's acceptable to our terms of service, Sorry, I would say, I, at this point. I had this thing up here, and it's just it's like totally dead. I've got all my slides on here, so. Is this yours? Yeah, yeah the aftermarket isn't quite there. <laughs> mm. so. Are you able to do it without it? Or? It is definitely a growing user base. Okay. Our, our no, I just uh, can't log in. Exactly. Yet, so. our, our usage on the so site, now, as well as yeah. our revenue on the site, has multiplied sevenfold in the yet. last two years. Yeah. 
you could think of it that way, but we also have an MMO that is going to be coming out late in this summer. Do you have a Japanese version of it? No, we don't actually have an Asian version of it. It's still English. But we do have users from all over the world. But before I took on the job, you'd go on and there were people from Malaysia talking to each other. It was very interesting. Okay. Sorry, I had some slides I was going to speak to here, but uh, computer's on the fritz, so I'm going to riff it. Uh, so hi, I'm Jeremy from Helio. Uh, I was the product lead for uh, Helio's uh, YouTube mobile application. Uh, let me see if I can just move this over here. Uh, basically, what we were trying to develop was uh, the full YouTube experience on mobile. So we uh, wanted to capture all the personalization functionality, all the community functionality. Uh, and again, just kind of bring the full YouTube experience to the mobile environment. So uh, I'll just uh, dive right into the application and kind of walk through uh, the features and functionality of the app uh, and just kind of speak to which, uh, which uh, APIs we used for, for, each, uh, for each feature here. Uh, this is uh, just the video screen. And this basically is uh, just using uh, the GData standard feeds. Uh, so here, the user has the option to switch between uh, most viewed videos, most uh, recent, top rated, and recently featured. Uh, in addition, of course, uh, for most, uh, most viewed and top rated, the user also has the option to uh, select a time filter so uh, they can sort by today, this week, this month, or all time. So if you select uh, most viewed by all time, you should get evolution of dance. And of course, there's evolution of dance. Uh, and of course, GData re uh, returns uh, standard set of metadata, so you'll get a uh, thumbnail, uh, uh, URL to the stream, um, and uh, other you know other standard metadata. So you get uh, you know the rating, uh, rate count, view count, uh, title, description, tags, duration, you know all that good stuff. Uh, also, uh, one thing to note for uh, for mobile, uh, John Harding was speaking to this earlier today, but uh, we use uh, slash mobile in all of our requests so that. Uh, the videos that are returned to us uh, are only those which have been encoded for the mobile environment uh, and also a, uh, a format parameter. Uh, and also very important, um, we use uh, RACI equals include. So uh, if you want to get all the good stuff, uh, be sure to include that. Uh, Tazon Day is great, but I mean, you know. <laughs> so uh, also, uh, so I'll you know, show you some of the uh, personalization features that you can, uh, you can add to your applications. Uh, my subscriptions, this basically just uses the, uh, the subscriptions feed. So it's a two-step process. So we use the subscriptions feed to uh, request the list of a user's subscriptions uh, for, the, uh, for the user. And then uh, once we have the list of sub uh, subscriptions, it's a uh, uh, second request for videos uh, uploaded by that user. Uh, we use the My Favorites feed. And I'm not going to show you my favorites. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, my playlist feed, also a two-step process. So <laughs> uh, request the list of the user's favorites, uh, but pardon me, a user's playlists, and then a, a second request uh, to uh, request videos from within the playlist. And that takes uh, playlist ID as an input. Uh, my videos is just the, uh, the uploads feed. Uh, and again, just returns videos uploaded by that user. Uh, we actually don't use authentication, uh, or don't, pardon me, don't have to use authentication for most of these feeds. Uh, we do, however, uh, prompt the user to log in just so we can get their user ID and again, use that as, as an input. Um, and then uh, you know, get, get, the, uh, get the feeds and the response. Received videos, on the other hand, actually does require authentication. Uh, that's the user's inbox. Uh, and again, uh, 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 provide the user ID to uh, GData and it returns a list of, uh, of all videos in the user's inbox. Uh, now I'm actually going to play a video, although there's no sound hooked up to here, so I'll just uh, play it very quickly uh, and show you some of the, uh, the related content and uh, community functionality that's in here. So as you're watching a video, you can select this more option. Uh, more info is just uh, additional metadata that is, that's exposed in the uh, list video responses. Um, you also have uh, requests, or we're also using like the re related videos request. So uh, we submit the, uh, the video ID of the video that the user is currently watching. Uh, and G, uh, G data uh, re automatically returns a list of videos that are related to the video that you're watching. Uh, similar process for video responses down here. Uh, send the video ID, GData re returns uh, videos that uh, are flagged as responses to the video that the user is watching. Uh, and actually, even for text comments. So if you uh, select recent comments on here, <coughs> excuse me, we'll uh, submit the video ID, and GData returns text comments for that video. Um, 
Also, again, you know, we wanted to capture the full community experience of YouTube uh, via mobile. So uh, we have features like subscribe, and, and all of these posts uh, require authentication, of course. And so uh, we're using the uh, client login method. Um, and so uh, when we get the auth token back from GData, we, we include that in those requests. Uh, but subscribe, uh, so you have the option to uh, subscribe to the channel of the user who, uh, who uploaded the video. Share, uh, here it's actually integrated with the device's uh, address book, but we also have the ability uh, using the list contacts method to uh, download the user's contact list. Please don't copy those down. Um, and uh, share videos with your friends. Of course, this video is going to be on YouTube, so uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, save to favorites, same thing. So uh, you know, give the ability, that, uh, give the user the ability to save a video to favorites. Save to playlist. Uh, again, a two-step process. First, we pull down uh, the user's list of favorite uh, playlists, rather, and then uh, post uh, the video to whichever uh, playlist has been selected. Uh, and then we have a rating widget. Uh, can flag videos as inappropriate, which isn't a lot of fun. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, post video responses, uh, that actually uses uh, two different videos as an input. So you've got the, uh, the video ID of the source video and then uh, the idea of, uh, ID of the video which you want to uh, flag as a response to the source video. Uh, and then uh, post a text comment. And the, uh, the final thing I wanted to show you guys is uh, upload functionality on here. So uh, we, uh, the app includes uh, integrated video capture, record, and upload functionality, but you can also just uh, browse videos on the device and uh, enter some uh, the required metadata. So title and description are required fields. Uh, category is also a required field, but it's, uh, it defaults to people and blogs, and so you can select you know, which, uh, which category you want to use. Uh, tags is optional. Uh, also, in our application, we, uh, we use the uh, devices integrated GPS capability, so we can uh, geotag the videos. Uh, and we're basically just appending uh, those geotags uh, as strings to the, uh, to the regular tags list. Uh, and then you can upload the video. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, uh, also uh, search functionality. Uh, pretty simple there. Uh, and that is pretty much it. So that's the uh, full YouTube experience on mobile. Are you using the Chrome player? No, no, this, uh, this is actually a custom, custom application. It's, uh, it's written in Whippy which is uh, it's a proprietary runtime environment, it's C-based. By the way, I should mention, um, I did study engineering like 10 years ago, but I've written, written code since then, so uh, go easy on me. <laughs> so. Is this Flash? Not Flash, no. It's, uh, it's, a, it's basically in C. So what platform is this? It, it, Whippy. So, the, so it's, it's basically like Brew, uh, but it's proprietary to some of the, the carriers from uh, South Korea. Yeah. So I couldn't do this? Like, do you have, like, So the API, all of the list video APIs return URLs to, uh, to the streaming servers, basically. So uh, based, based on the, the slash mobile parameter and then the format that we request, we get videos uh, in a format that's customized for our device. But there are other formats that are you know, more ubiquitous uh, that you can use. And you can stream via RTSP, or you know, some of them are just the, you know, the standard Swift files. So. We have time for like one or more, one or a couple questions for the entire panel. If anyone has any follow-up questions for anybody, I mean, for for Animoto, is pretty straightforward. I mean, it just took a few days to to get it going, but again, it's just pushing to YouTube, so can't speak to the other way. For uh, Slide, it was basically simple. The G data feeds were easy to use. Um, Chromeless Player pretty much was no no problems with creating a wrapper around it. Uh, it was just mostly design decisions at that point. So, after your team has done their own API, it's easy to use the official one. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean. 
everybody already said it, but uh, GD8 is very easy to use. I mean, everything we built, although we built the custom client, all of the you know all the information that's being passed back and forth is via G data, um, and then and the uh, the uptake by our users has been tremendous. I mean, we've seen 90% uh, adoption. It's a downloadable application, so 90% of our users have downloaded it, um, and 60% are using it on a monthly basis. So I mean, there's obviously a tremendous desire to have this content on the device. So. Other questions? Does Google incentivize you monetarily to build any of this stuff? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, the answer for us is uh, no. Uh, but we just kind of wanted to create the coolest experience possible, and, and uh, you know, they've, they've been a great partner. So. And not directly, but the technical support that they do provide and the way they're always willing to help is like a couple of extra team members. So in that way, yes. As far as I know, no, but my engineer might be making something on the side or t-shirts. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and for us it's, it's, uh, for us it's no, it's, uh, we see it as a, as a marketing thing. Um, so, you know, the fact that they're paying for our bandwidth and, and exposing the masses to our brand is a good thing. Uh, nothing under the covers, so. Anything over the covers? No, not at all. And for all of us, I think. Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so they they were trying to, well, they asked if we wanted to do that as part of being a launch partner. And because um, we could offload a lot of our expense, the streaming expense. Um, but then every video has YouTube in the bottom right corner. And, you know, the experience isn't ours. It's, so uh, in the end, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. I mean, we could revisit it at some point. But we want the Animoto branding to be there, not YouTube branding for that. Yeah. Yeah, I actually haven't looked at that report recently, but just la I mean, just last night it actually was kind of a shock to me that the top twenty videos had a million views because, you know, total. Uh, I mean, I, I haven't looked at our recent views, but that's that's a big chunk of our total views. Um, but in terms of actually click throughs, I haven't looked at that report recently. Up front, it was uh, it was a pretty good source of, of click throughs. From Guy's perspective, it's not a huge driver of traffic. Yeah, for us, I think, I think it's behind uh, Twitter and Dig, Dig for us. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think there are no more, no more questions, right? Everyone wants to get to the happy hour. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much to the panelists for presenting, and hopefully you guys got a... Got a <laughs> so that basically concludes our Powered by YouTube Day. I just want to thank everyone, again, on behalf of the whole team for coming out here to lovely San Bruno to, to be here. And hopefully you guys are walking out of here with a good overview of our APIs and are, have a lot of creative ideas on how to integrate the APIs into your user experience. Um, just one or two housekeeping notes. Um, you guys got surveys, hopefully paper surveys. These are your, the completed surveys are basically your ticket to get a cool Powered by YouTube t-shirt just out there. Um, and if you want to be part of a raffle we're doing for one of five flip nanos, if you, or I'm sorry, those are iPods, uh, flip minnows, <laughs> those are the pocket camcorders. Um, you just need to make sure you put your name and phone number on your survey. Um, but you just need to head out where you registered and drop those off. And um, we hope to see you guys at more events that we do like this. So thank you very much. <laughs>